Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and in this video we're going to talk about error handling in Swift. So without any further ado, let's get started. So guys, error handling is the process of responding to and recovering from error conditions in our program. Swift provides first class support for throwing, catching, propagating and manipulating recoverable errors at runtime. So to understand this, let's jump right into our Xcode playground. So guys, let's start with throwing an error. And in Swift, errors are represented by values of types that confirm to the error protocol. And this empty protocol, you know, indicates that a type can be used for error handling. Like we have this enum right here, which name is vending machine error. And this vending machine error could probably uh, create these three type of cases that is invalid selection, insufficient fund or out of stock. So we used to throw a particular error if the fund or if uh, the if the funds are not sufficient enough then we will throw the error in this manner like this throwing an error lets you uh, indicate that something unexpected happened and the normal flow of the execution cannot continue now when the error is thrown some surrounding piece of code must be responsible for handling the error for example we have this function right here which we think that it could uh, throw a potential error that's why we have written this throw call right after it and if we think that some function or th some method uh, might not create an error in the future, uh, so we don't care about writing throw uh, against it. All right, it's a function, you know, marked with this throws is called a throwing function. And we have, you know, four methods to, you know, handle our errors. So those four methods is you, you can pro propagate the error from a function to the code that calls that function. The second one is handle the error using a do catch statement. The third one is to handle the error as an optional value or assert that the error will not occur. So let's see that one by one. So guys, in this example, this buy favorite snack function, uh, you know, looks up a given person's favorite snack and tries to buy it for them by calling the vend item named method, which is right here. And because the vend item named method can throw an error, it's called with the try keyword in the front of it as you can see right here like throwing initializers can you know propagate errors in the same way as throwing functions so guys we use a do catch statement to handle errors by running a block of code if an error is thrown by the code in the do clause it is matched against the catch clauses you know to determine which one of them can handle the error like here is the example the, the main syntax uh, in which we write this do try catch clause and we write it something like this and we have this real example for that as well so guys in this example as you can see this uh, by favorite you know function uh, has this key, uh, try keyword against it so because it can throw an error so if an error is thrown execution immediately transfers to the catch clauses so we have these four catch clauses right here and which decide whether to allow propagation to continue if no pattern is matched. The error gets caught by the final catch clause and it is bound to a local error constant. If no error is thrown, the remaining statement in the, in the do statement are executed. So the catch clauses don't have to handle every possible error that the code in the do clause can throw. If none of the catch clause handle the error, the error propagates to the surrounding scope. So now let's see how we use this try optional to handle an error by converting it to an optional value. So guys, if an error is thrown while evaluating the try, uh, this try optional expression, the value of the expression is nil. For example, in the, uh, you know, the following example where we have just given, uh, right, you can see we have given this function which could throw a potential error. So we have written this uh, return call that is an integer and we have written something right here. And if this function is going, if we have create, uh, if we create a new instance for this and if we think that it could throw a potential error, we can write this try optional right against it. So that it prevents it from failing and it writes nil if there is no value returned from this function. In this case, we have hard coded this return one. Otherwise, if we write a proper function and if we try to get a value out of it, we can write some throwing function against it. We can write the keyword try optional. 
so this try optional makes you know the value of x and y to be nil if there is no error which we get so now let's talk about disabling error propagation so guys sometimes we know a throwing function or method would not in fact throw an error at red time on those occasions you can write try and this dang mark as you can see right here in this example and before the expression to disable error propagation and wrap the call in a runtime assertion that no error will be thrown but if an error actually is thrown you will get a runtime error so you can you know mention that if we use this try and dang mark against it and if there is any error that would occur in this case then it would be thrown at the runtime all right so this is an example in which we have created this object which is calling a function uh, load load image and it is taking the path of the image all right so it loads the image resource at a given path or throws an error if the image cannot be loaded but in this case because the image is shipped with the application no error will be thrown at runtime so it is appropriate to disable error propagation by writing this try keyword against it with a dang mark so guys let's talk about specifying cleanup actions now so we use a defer statement to execute a set of statements just before code execution leaves the current block of code this statement lets you do any necessary cleanup that should be performed regardless of how execution leaves the current block of code whether it leaves because an error was thrown or because of a statement such as return or break so for example we have this you know dummy example for you in which we have written defer and we have written close the file so guys in this example we have used its defer statement to ensure that the open function has a corresponding to call to a close function okay and we can use a defer statement even when no error handling code is involved so it is independent of that as well so guys that's all for now if you have any doubt please write it in the comment section down below and i will surely reply to that so guys if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe my channel for more such videos in future see you in the next one bye bye jai hind